بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد بن مكتوم نائب رئيس الدولة رئيس مجلس الوزراء حاكم دبي أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة تغمرنا السعادة بوجودنا في بلدنا الثاني ونفتخر بما حققت الأمارات في شتى مجالات التقدم وخصوصا في مجال الفضاء اسمحوا لي أن انتقل إلى لغة المؤتمر So uh, I will be talking about space science for human development. Uh, many people think space is far away, it's not tangible, it's a luxury. I want to show that it is really important for uh, human development in all aspects. Um, King Abdurrahim City for Science and Technology uh, is basically the space agency uh, has uh, plays the space agency role in the kingdom plus responsibilities for all science technology uh, and innovation uh, it formulates policies uh, coordinate national activities and uh, co support research and perform national uh, research uh, and also promote uh, partnership and investment uh, in space technology uh, space is viewed uh, as a strategic frontier for technology advancement. Uh, maybe some of you would know that uh, the Kingdom participated in the Space Shuttle mission uh, 51G in 1985. Um, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Salman was the first Muslim and Arab astronaut participated in that mission as a payload specialist uh, for the ArabSat 1B. Uh, deployment. There were several experiments performed in that mission, one of them which I was at that time as a student uh, principal investigator and it was uh, measuring the emissions of space shuttle uh, reaction thrusters, um, gases and interaction with the ionosphere. It was go called the ionized gas experiment. The mission uh, uh, really made a lasting impact on the kingdom. Uh, so since then, the kingdom invested in building uh, human resources and uh, also uh, launching several satellites in the process. Looking at the, our human resources, both male and female, uh, we are now uh, about 500 and 10% uh, are female. And we launched since uh, 2013 satellites and we plan to launch several satellites. Uh, there will be about 20 by uh, year 2020. Some of these satellites are shown here. Um, and we also established uh, a national company called Tacnia Space Company in order to commercialize and create an industry for space uh, in the kingdom. Uh, as well uh, as we uh, um, uh, work with commercial satellites. We have um, collaboration with Lockheed and also Arabsat uh, on communication satellites in, K in the KA band. Uh, we receive all kinds of satellite imageries uh, with very high resolution up to 30 uh, centimeter resolution as well as weather satellites and of course navigation satellites, the GPS and various applications uh, of GPS not only for the GIS applications but uh, tectonic uh, movements and looking at uh, gravity measurements and also natural resources. Uh, our contribution to uh, space technology is in one of the uh, satellite missions 2002, we launched the first uh, use of terrestrial solar cells in space. Uh, and, and that satellite has been alive for 15 years. I don't know if it's still running but we have given that to the amateur uh, satellite community. Uh, it's called OSCAR 50. I don't know if it's still alive, but it's been there for more than 15 years. And tells you terrestrial type satellites, can, uh, solar cells can be used in space, but we need a few, few um, uh, modifications and it actually reduces the cost considerably. Also on Saudi Comsat in 2007, 
This is the first use of AIS. Uh, this is uh, as, uh, automatic asset, um, asset uh, uh, tracking and uh, track ships. Now, the huge applications for it, but this was the first ever use of AIS. Um, also, we collaborate and acquired a company in the Silicon Valley uh, and changed that uh, company to go into space cells. It is producing now the highest efficiency in the world, 33% uh, efficiency for space, and as well as a new technology for um, back contact being done in collaboration with Sierra Nevada to actually reduce um, uh, the size and increase the power by 28% just by packing these cells closely. So these two innovations are gonna have impact, huge impact in future uh, space. This announcement with Sierra Nevada was done about a few months ago. And here just to show that NREL, uh, this is the National Renewable uh, Lab in the United States, shows the solar cells from solar junction has the highest efficiency in the world. And as well as in the antenna, we've developed in collaboration with Caltech, the new um, phase array antenna that communicate with the geostationary satellites replacing the parabolic antenna, the mechanical antenna. So this is the first use of phase array antenna in the world for KA. And I know Yasat here in the UAE, so they will be happy to use this kind of antenna. And uh, as well as we dedicated a special satellite for space experiments, we call this SaudiSat-4. It's a reconfigurable satellite bus, 100 kilogram, payload of 40 kilogram, can be launched with various uh, launchers and can be used for various experiments. Uh, this is more detailed information uh, on the uh, satellite. It was launched, um, actually, and I'll explain um, that uh, experiment. Also, we participated uh, with Stanford and NASA on the Gravity Probe B satellite. This is a 50-year experiment, but in the data analysis, they got stuck and they could not extend the program. We came in, we participated in the program, to finalize the result, and here is the final result, was published, the um, uh, Gravity Probe B, final results of space experiments confirming general relativity, and four of the authors are from CAXT. So we're very happy to contribute to this important contribution to science. And also there is a dedicated uh, issue of classical quantum gravity, about the technologies and the whole 50 year experience with this mission. And there is also a film from uh, public broadcasting in the US called Cosmos, What is Space? Talks about this experiment. It's important to um, mention, and I'll go back on here, when we ask what is the benefit for space, this experiment is the reason for the development of GPS. In fact, uh, I showed his picture earlier. This person on the right side is Professor Brad Parkinson. He is the founder of GPS, and he was the director of this experiment when it was initially done. So GPS idea came out of the gravity probe B. Many people don't know that, but this is the origin. Therefore, experiments in space can have effect on everyday activity without actually knowing it becomes later somebody would realize that. On this also, we did an experiment on uh, Saudi Sat 4, I mentioned, in collaboration with NASA and Stanford, and was launched 2014. It's a derivative of the first experiment, and this was to test uh, 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 ultraviolet uh, light emitting diode uh, and its effect on charging and discharging a sphere. This sphere is suspended inside the satellite to provide drag free. And this is the concept that was used in the Gravity Probe B. It has huge, huge applications and I'll show some of the application. This experiment 
uh, two of our uh, engineers doing their PhD at Stanford uh, did uh, work on this experiment. And this is the final result for the experiment. More than 60 runs were done uh, and it confirmed the charging and discharging space of this sphere um, and, and uh, its performance as in the lab. And the paper also indicate the activities and the authorship you can see from both uh, NASA, Stanford, and CAXT. And here um, we developed in collaboration with uh, Stanford and NASA this miniaturized autonomous di distributed space system for future science and exploration. The use of smaller satellites instead of huge ones to do many important experiments is really a breakthrough. And this is one of the technologies we're doing. It's a 10-year uh, plan with many satellites to be launched. And we have a plan to uh, have what's called MGRS, Modular uh, Gravity Reference uh, Sensor. M-STAR, this is for testing special relativity uh, for space um, time asymmetry test. M-GRACE, this is for gravitational measurement. Uh, M-DIOS, and also M-LISA for gravitational wave measurement. This will be a 10-year plan in order to do science at a smaller scale that will have huge impact on gravity measurement on Earth for natural resources, and also discovery of gravitational waves, which will revolutionize science. So small satellites have huge impact uh, for science and human development. Thank you very much.